In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is my joy to greet each one of you. Happy, happy Sabbath. I would like to thank Ma'am Lagahino for uh, this time that your servant will be asked to lead out in the lesson review this week. We are so thankful that God is really putting into our minds the value of Christian education and how to make the Bible central in our teaching ministry. Last week, the past lessons we have tackled about Jesus as the master teacher. And as members of the church, it is our duty and we'll have that privilege to learn lessons from our great master teacher. The book of Mark, especially chapter 1, verse 22, it is clearly telling us that when people during the time of Jesus witnessed him teaching, they marveled, they were astonished, they were amazed on how Jesus taught because he taught with authority, not like the scribes. You know, knowing the historical background of this passage, the Jewish people, especially the scribes who are considered, who were considered to be the most brilliant or uh, respected teachers during their time. But when Jesus taught, they made a comparison and made this comment. They were astonished, they were amazed, they were marveled the way Jesus teaches because he taught, he teaches with authority, not like the scribes. Because Jesus lived what he teaches. He lived what he taught. As a church, we should be modeling our teaching ministry from the, Bible, from the master teacher. And this week, we will be studying the church and education. The church as a place where we educate members, individuals for the kingdom of God. Let's first identify what do we mean by the church. But before that, may I ask the congregation to bow down as we pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, with humble hearts, we want to come to your presence this morning. We want to thank you for your great love to us. We want to thank you for giving us these concepts of Christian education, true education, wherein we will model our ministry, the teaching ministry, after our master teacher, Jesus Christ. He taught with authority, not like the scribes. May in our context as a church, as members of your church, we'll also teach with authority because we live what we teach us. May you give us understanding through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, for we ask in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Church, what do we mean by church? There are uh, main terms used in the New Testament to describe the word church. The first one is kuriakos. Kuriakos means people who belongs people who belong to the Lord. That which belong to the Lord. 
So is the church is God's property. God, a church is a group of community of people belonging to God. So that is the sacred uh, status or identity of one who is a member of the church. He belongs to Jesus. One who belongs to God. So that will be our dis dis distinguishing mark. We are people belonging to God. The second one is Ecclesia, called out to gather, to assemble for a special purpose or mission. So God created the church. God has formed, established his church for a special purpose. That is to carry the gospel, to give him the glory in all the things that the church will do. So that is the meaning of the church. People belonging to God and people who are gathered, who were gathered, who are gathering for a special purpose and mission. The church in education, education, as we know, is a special gift coming from God, our Heavenly Father. Teaching ministry is one of the gifts mentioned by Paul. Our critic says, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others. When we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you. Just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children, so affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives, because you had become there to us. As a teacher, Paul says here, did not seek the glory of men, nor to others but for only for the glory of God. So teaching ministry, let's do it in the glory of God. Whatever we do as a church, we should do for the glory of God. As an apostle of Christ, one who is sent by Jesus, one who is sent by Christ, so teaching is a calling, special calling coming from Jesus, coming from God. But we were gentle among you. A teacher was gentle compared to a nursing mother that cherishes her own children affectionately. He didn't only impart knowledge. He didn't only impart the gospel of God, but also our own life because you had become there to us. An African proverb says, takes the whole community to educate a child. So in a Christian context, I would like also to state the whole church, it takes the whole church to educate an individual. It's one of us has that responsibility to teach, to train others for the glory of God. A church then is a place where to learn to love. A place where we learn how to love. Seeing as Jesus does to individuals. Luke 10, 30, 33 says, But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. You know, this parable, but before looking at this parable, let me tell you, that in the Gospels, in the Gospel, we can read this description. When Jesus saw the multitude, when he saw the crowd, he was moved with compassion because they are like sheep without a shepherd. Seeing an individual in God's perspective in the eye of Jesus seeing 
as Jesus does to the individuals is very, very important in our teaching ministry. Church should be a place where to learn how to love and value individuals as Jesus valued them. You know, 1033, uh, the Samaritan, we know the story that among the Jewish people and the Samaritans, there were barriers, there were barriers between them. You know, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, Jericho to Jerusalem is very, was a very rugged cross, a road and full of uh, danger. It's a dangerous place to travel. Many were victims of being killed, being wounded, being persecuted in that place. And the record tells us that when the lawyer was asking Jesus what to do in order to inherit eternal life, and he was asking, who is my neighbor? Jesus responded with this parable. A wounded man was in the road, and the priest passed by, and the priest, as if he did not see an individual who is needing a help, needing a compassion, followed by a Levites. They are leaders in the temple during their time, but they are preaching about love. They are teaching about love, but here they don't know how to to actualize or put that concept into practicality. So, a parable was given that a good Samaritan, even he was, he is an enemy with a Jew. They have barriers between them. But even our enemies who need our help is our neighbor. Let's value individuals as God valued them. Let us see their worth in the perspective of the cross. The cross will tell us that it takes, took the precious son, the very precious blood of the son of God to redeem a fallen humanity. And uh, Ellen G. White even Continues saying, even though you are only the one who committed sin, he is still willing to come down and offer in your behalf. So human beings are very important. So as a church, it is our uh, task to make this uh, church a place when we learn or which we Learn how to love and see individuals in Jesus' eyes. The next one is the church is a place where we learn how to care others as Jesus did. Let's read that John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The measurement on how we care an individual, the measurement how we love an individual is as Jesus loved them. Not like as Pastor Cabazon loved them. Let us love. The church should love others as Jesus loved them. I am so thankful because there is progression now in uh, formation of small groups. Before, they called it action teams, but now small groups, but now they call it as caring group. Really, the church should be a caring people to the community, a caring people to bring uh, people to the knowledge of truth so that they will know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Learn. A place to learn how to care as Jesus did. 
There is a saying that goes, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. Church members may be able to explain the doctrine so clearly. But if we don't know how to care people, how to care for them, preaching is not that powerful. So, the quotation of Billy G. White is very right when she says, if we are humble, if we are meek, if we are loving, instead of one soul being baptized, one soul being baptized we should have hundreds and thousands. When caring ministry is done, preaching of the gospel, teaching the gospel to others is more uh, is more powerful and more attractive. I still remember the testimony that was given by one of the elders there in Bacoor when I attended uh, their fellowship that he did some ministry, caring ministry in the barangay hall in that barangay near, uh, barangay near to that church in Bacoor. And being a nurse by profession, people were wondering why every Sabbath, every Sabbath afternoon is there with his companions doing ministry in health. Maybe blood pressure screening, weight screening, and others ministry. And out of this caring act, caring ministry that he did in that barangay, There were 13 souls. 13 souls were brought inside the church. They were now baptized and then are now good standing of our church. Members of the church. So when caring ministry is implemented or caring ministry must be done, this will be a good ground preparation for the preaching of the gospel. So in the church, uh, the church members should learn how to care one another. Because when new believers comes in, come in, they should be able to feel the warmness or the caring act of members inside the church. A place where to learn how to care. The next one is church is a place where we can learn the truth as it in Jesus. Seeking the truth which is Jesus. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait. So church was organized to carry the gospel to the world. And as a church who will teach the gospel to the world must diligently study the scripture. Uh, Ellen G. White says, study the scripture deeply more than any other books. Let us diligently seek the truth and make this as our basis in answering all the questions that are being asked by members and those people whom we come in contact with. Questions like, who are we? Why are we here? Where are we going? Why evil exists? Why there is suffering? Where is our destiny? Questions so many are, we are, many bom we are bombarded with questions. And it is a responsibility of the church to study the scripture so that they can address these questions. Like for example, when I was still a child, I cannot understand one who preached about the Lamb of God that take it away the sins of the world. Now that I read the Bible, I understand now that it is related in the plan of redemption that Jesus is the Lamb of God take it away the sins of the world. It is only 
through his sacrifice that I have salvation. A place where right teaching, where truth is being taught. Like for example, uh, the concept about the character of God. Some members are unaware that they are teaching implanting to the early minds, young minds of children. That when we misbehave during our uh, childhood days, one of the grandmother there will tell us, susunugin ka ng Panginoon, Jesus, God will burn you, the God will cut your tongue. We look at that point of time, God is cruel. God is a harsh God. But the more I read the Bible, the more I listen to the preachers now, I was enlightened that God is a loving God. The true character, the true nature of God is being displayed in the scripture. You know, learning. It's a place where we educate. A church should be a place where truths are being exposed. We are explained correctly and rightly interpreted. The last one, a church is a place to learn how to share Jesus. Sharing Jesus. For, the, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So, this is a promise. You know, the first, the early Christians, they are described to be Believers who shared their goods, shared their time, shared their talents. They were willing to share what they have. And most importantly is sharing Jesus to their loved ones, neighborhood, and people whom they come in contact. It is because of this desire that they want to share Jesus to others. This passion, this burden, why the early church increased in numbers so very fast. Sharing Jesus. It is a place where our elders, church officers will teach young people, will teach new believers that as early as they are, they will be willing to to share Jesus in their neighborhood. So this are the description of a church, a place of education. A church should be a place where we learn to love and value human beings, our fellow men, in the eye, in the perspective of God's eye. Let's value them according to what God had valued them. It's a place to teach our members to live that give glory to God, to be light in the community so that preaching will be more effective because they see the good works and glorify our Father. It's a place where we learn how to care like Jesus. It's a caring church. It's a place where to learn the truth, which is Jesus. It is a place where we'll learn to share Jesus to our friends, learn to share Jesus to others. It's my prayer that as we ponder upon this truth, that church was established for a purpose, for a special mission to bring the gospel to the world, that as members, we will be God's instrument of making others true disciples of Jesus, true disciples of Jesus, and make them responsible members of the church and be prepared for his second coming.